Thailand by far is the most popular place to buy property as a foreign investor. But to me, Thailand is now dead. Hi, I'm Reed Kirkenbauer with InvestAsian.com, and you're watching Nomad Capitalist. I find that usually when people buy property offshore, they buy in places that they're familiar with. Places perhaps that they uh, visited as a tourist or have done business in before. Right now, Bangkok, Thailand is the most visited city in the entire world, even beating out London and Paris and all of the historically most touristed cities. Um, therefore, lots of people visit Thailand, they see what they imagine to be great business opportunities, and they think, well, okay, I'm going to buy a condo in Thailand, I'm going to make my first offshore uh, property investment, and they kind of get all caught up in the uh, thrill of being a tourist in Thailand, and the hustle and bustle that they see. Uh, they might be new to the region, they might not, either way, um, they're in Thailand and they want to buy real estate. Uh, I think the opportunities in Thailand have mostly come and gone, though. Now, I I've personally done well in Thailand. I bought there first back in 2011, a condominium unit. Uh, I've bought two other properties since then. And I I've done well with them, but I also bought at 2010, 2011 prices, uh, last decade's prices. Back then, you could buy real estate right in the city center of Bangkok for... $3,000, $4,000 per square meter, which is, is, is moderate in a global context back then. But um, compared to many other Asian cities, such as Hong Kong and Singapore, and uh, even less developed cities than Bangkok, such as Manila, the Philippines, uh, $3,000, $4,000 per square meter is a good deal. Um, that's not the case anymore. It's very difficult to find a condo in Thailand, right in the city center, next to a, a BTS, an MRT, rapid transit system, for less than $7,000 per square meter. Therefore, I think the opportunities in Thailand have mostly come and gone. Uh, Thailand's economy in itself right now is among the slowest growing in Southeast Asia. Their GDP growth uh, as of 2020, this year, is expected to come in at under 3%. Depending on what happens, it could be well below that. I know they missed their estimate last year. By 2030, Thailand's population is also expected to decline. Right now, Thailand's population is close to about 70 million people. Um, by 2030, they're going to face the same problem that Japan is right now. Their population is going to start falling uh, to around 60, 55 million before the end of this century. Now, you probably won't live until the end of this century, but the fact is, do you really want to invest in a place where demographic trends are on the downturn? Do you really want to invest in a city where there's more and more construction, but that it's practically a given where people are going to, uh, there's not going to be as many people in Bangkok anymore. There's not going to be as much demand for real estate. Meanwhile, prices, uh, as I just noted, aren't uh, the deal they once were. You can buy property in Kuala Lumpur for $3,000, $4,000 per square meter. And Malaysia is a bit more developed than Thailand as a city, even if uh, it's not uh, quite as touristed, there's not as quite as much uh, overall growth potential for Malaysia as a regional power compared to Thailand and Indonesia, Vietnam, and the larger, more populous economies in this region with 100 million people living in them. Uh, therefore, I think the opportunities in Thailand, you can maybe find a few deals. Thailand has new mass transit systems being built uh, all the time. Uh, three lines are under construction in Bangkok right now. So maybe if you do want to invest in Thailand, buying near one of these up-and-coming mass transit lines might be a good deal in the right context. Uh, you certainly shouldn't go into this as a tourist uh, without knowing exactly what you're doing, uh, exactly what locations are good uh, and what locations are not so good, uh, which locations will have increased demand for tenants in the long term, and which ones uh, will be the first to decline once people start uh, uh, 
not moving out of Bangkok, but once the population starts just reducing, just as a mere fact of Thailand's uh, demographic decline. For those reasons, I think uh, Thailand's real estate market is largely dead, unless there's a correction in the near future. How can Nomad Capitalist help you? Four ways. Number one, subscribe to our channel and click the notification bell to make sure you get our new video every day. Number two, get a copy of Nomad Capitalist, the book. You'll learn a lot of my personal experiences over a dozen years of studying this stuff, as well as exactly some of the strategies that you can use to build your Nomad Capitalist plan. Number three, if you're not sure where to start, but you want to come and learn from my team and I, you want to come and mingle with like-minded people, learn more about our live conference, Nomad Capitalist Live. It's coming up soon. And number four, if you want some help right now because you've got a burning issue, you need something solved, you want to lower your taxes, get a second passport, or build the Nomad Capitalist lifestyle of your dreams, go to nomadcapitalist.com and click on Become a Client.